Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we finished up Petalburg Woods and got here to Rustboro City. We haven't seen any hide or hair of Team Aqua yet, but that's probably going to change fairly soon. Anyway, before we start things off, I want to go into this house and show this. This guy here. Oh, my Pokemon is cute. Sure, I know that, but you wanted him. Trading, willing trading you. Trading my CDOT for a Ralts. That is a horrible trade. I would never take a CDOT over a Ralts. I hate to say it, but all the in-game trades in this game suck. The way that these work is that you can trade your Pokemon, it'll be the same level as the one that you traded. And sometimes it's holding a special item though, but it's not really that useful, in this game at least. There are good in-game trades in other games, and actually this in-game trade is a bit different in Ruby and Sapphire, but it's also equally not that good, because you got to trade a slack off of the Pokemon you're getting. And the Pokemon you're getting in the Ruby and Sapphire version of this trade is Makuhita. Makuhita is really different from most fighting types. It's more so of a tank, has a lot of potential to take hits, and has a lot of HP. Now what's really strange though about Makuhita is once it evolves into Hariyama, which it does quite late, so you'd expect this Pokemon to be really tough, oddly, Hariyama's easier to catch according to the game's catch rate than Makuhita is. Yeah, the pre-evolution is more difficult. I don't get how that works. The thing is, this in-game trade basically exists for people who pick Torchic, who are not going to have an advantage against the first gym, which, big spoiler, uses rock types, just like in just about every game in the series, aside with only two exceptions. Now this trade, I don't recommend even if you want a Makuhita, because there's much better types to attack rock with, because it's more weak to special than it is to physical. And if you really want a Makuhita, you can just catch one in the next town, it's not that far away, so you're not really doing yourself any favors by taking this trade even if you want it. So, now that we have covered that, time for what you've probably all been waiting for, and that's the gym! This gym has a different layout than it did in Ruby and Sapphire, I believe now it isn't possible to skip every trainer here. But the way that a gym typically works is, you go inside, I'll take us gym trainers lightly, we'll, I'll show you why we're better. Okay, fine. Now he'll show us! Josh. Geodude. And I'm disrupting the alliteration there, even though it's not the same letter, it's still the same sound. So, in this gym, if I may suggest, that C dot trade, I know why that's there. That's basically that if you do not have a grass type for this gym, you might want to get one. These Pokemon here are almost entirely rock and ground type meaning that they have a double weakness to grass or water. If you chose Torchic, you're going to struggle a bit here, because Torchic is, unfortunately, not very good against these types of Pokemon. However, I have my Lotad, so I really should not be running into any problems whatsoever, because my Lotad should deal with anything that I need it to deal with. That was a very awkwardly constructed sentence. You were too good for me. Yeah, better. Really, you have one Pokemon. Like, I haven't seen that before. Rock's terrifying power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Here, we have a double battle. This is actually a new feature in Emerald. If two trainers see you at the same time, they battle you simultaneously, which is kind of cool. This cannot happen with three or more trainers, only with two. So. Yankster Tommy and Hiker Mark want a battle. Oh, hi, Mark. Geodude and Geodude. At least Teddy's going to get a lot of experience here. So the way that I'm pretty much going to do this is... Eh, do I divide up these? You know what? Yeah, I'll divide them up. All right, hold up for a minute. Okay, so right there I was just debating whether or not I should split up my attacks between the two Pokemon, and I was saying, well, Scratch isn't going to do much damage, though, but then I went for it anyway, without even realizing that I have Yawn, which would put them to sleep. What am I doing? And I do this multiple times in this video. Let this kill it. I probably should have used Bullet Seed. Oh, cool. I didn't need to. Woo! Why am I getting so excited over beating a level 8 Geodude? Really? And that seems to be all they have is Geodudes. I know this isn't going to do very much. Yeah, not very much. At least it's going for Lotad, not for Teddy. And Teddy's not going to get to attack this turn, unfortunately. And... I should have used Bullet Seed. I really should have. I'm not going to get two criticals in a row. Oh, never mind. One hit kills no matter what. Okay, I'll take it. And level 14. How come... 
I want Teddy to get the levels, not Lotad. Uh. It just seems to never end. I can never close these gaps between these Pokemon, even though like I'm over leveled and I shouldn't be leveling up on my bigger Pokemon. Bigger Pokemon, better Pokemon. It just isn't happening. Okay. Geodude, big surprise. You know, it's not that good of a strategy to have four of the exact same Pokemon. You know, I find it kind of ironic that this is like the town of like the ritzy trainer school and yet they don't seem to teach that for whatever reason because trainers all throughout this game do that. And that does it, you've got some potential. I know, I am very potent. Our challenger is a feisty customer. Oh, Lotad is evolving! Whoa, okay. First example of an evolution right here. Lotad apparently reached the right level for this. Lotad is now going to evolve. Into an even greater Mexican stereotype! And Lotad evolved into Lombre. Okay. So, now that that is done, we're gonna end- no, we're not. I gotta quit making that joke, I've made that quite a few times, but anyway. Uh, I can't decide what I'm gonna do here, I'm thinking of just switch training, okay. So, hello, I'm Roxanne, the Rustbora Pokemon Gym Leader. I became a gym leader so that I might apply what I learned at the Pokemon Trainer School in battle. Would you like to kindly demonstrate how you battle and with which Pokemon? Okay, so we have an honor student right here, yeah. A little girl has become a gym leader. It was a student at the school. Yeah, she doesn't get picked on for being an elitist. So, she's gonna start off with Geodude here. Geodude has the moves, Tackle, Defense Curl, Rock Throw, and Rock Tomb. Rock Tomb is the main attack that she's gonna be using in you in this battle. Does a lot of damage, and it typically will lower, no, it always lowers your speed, what the heck am I saying? It's kind of a way of making up for rock types and their general slowness. But Geodude, I should say, is very defensive physically. Unfortunately, it has a lot of weaknesses, which kind of doesn't make it the greatest Pokemon in the world. When it evolves into Graveler, it continues to be a bit more, it continues to be really defensive and doesn't really seem to change. It does learn some more offensive moves as a Graveler, though. To evolve it, you need to trade it with somebody else. That when it gets taken, sent to them, they will get its final evolution, which is Golem. Golem, I used to think was really, really good back in the days of Red and Blue. But unfortunately, rock types seem to keep getting nerfed by an overflow of water Pokemon that we're getting introduced into these games. They get really heavily buffed in the fourth game in the series, though, but maybe some other time. Okay, so with that, Teddy grew to level 10. I'm going to go and switch back to him. If you're playing Ruby and Sapphire, she will not have a second Geodude. Instead, she will have one Geodude that is level 14 instead of level 12. So they kind of distributed her power a bit more in this game, and you have a bit more to do in this battle. However, this Geodude is no different from her previous one. It is exactly the same in every way, even moves. So there really is nothing to talk about here, and... <sighs> that attack actually reminds me of when I this game first came out. I remember that when this game first came out, there was this little kid who looked up to me in uh, middle school. I think it was just so much. It was like an elementary middle school that I went to, and he looked up to me just so freaking much. And I remember that he saw a Pokemon do that attack. And no, I, I did that Pokemon. Um, I, bleh, I used that attack on, on him in a battle. And instead of him commenting on how I lowered his speed because he was like eight years old or something like that, he was like, you're so mean, you drew a red X on me. That's supposed to show that it's lowering your speed by trapping you, though, but he's like, you're so mean, you drew a red X on me. <laughs> I don't know why, I just always thought that was funny. Anyway, her last Pokemon and her star player is a Nose Pass, which is pure rock type. It has the moves Block, which prevents you from escaping. You cannot switch when it does that. Harden, Tackle, and Rock Tomb. Nose Pass looks like a work of modern art, if I do say so myself. Nose Pass, I really do not like. Very generic rock Pokemon. It doesn't evolve in anything better, not in this game at least. If you want to catch one for yourself, you can't do it until really, really late in the game. It's just one of those rare Pokemon that isn't really that good. So I'd say skip out on Nose Pass. It is not a very good Pokemon. And I'm really hopeful that I can beat it here because if I can't, I'm going to be in some serious trouble. Oh. Um. Well. 
thing is her strongest Pokemon. It's getting the same type attack bonus, which if I've not said that already, if you are the same type as your attack, then you do one and a half times the amount of damage with it, which is why it's good to have the moves that are your type. And that Orenberry, the heal 10 of its HP, playing Ruby and Sapphire, it will not have that item either. It also will not have block. I believe it will have uh, rock throw instead. I really do know way too much about Pokemon. I am just such a Poke nerd. And Are you kidding me? Stop being so cheap. It's like, what? Is she like the top of her class? She's like, hey, I know to use a potion on my Pokemon when it's running out of health. I am an honor student. I'm the top of the class because I know to do that. Is that how she made it to the top of her class? Because it really wouldn't surprise me. Oh, an item spammer, I see. Okay, that explains how you made it to the top of your class so easy. Hey, I know to do that because it makes it not die or faint. Okay, and I have no clue why I'm making Roxanne sound like a retarded cousin of Dr. Phil. And I'm probably going to get a lot of really comments about how it's bad taste to use that word, and I apologize. Anyway, is this going to finish it off? Yes, it is. We have won our first gym battle, and let's hope that Teddy gets a level off of that, please. You know, I find it odd that I've been saying my cat's name loudly, and he has never come in here at all, so I lost. It seems that I have much to learn. I understand. The Pokemon League's rules state that trainers are to be given this if they don't if they defeat a gym leader. So please accept the official Pokemon League stone badge. Give me your money, because you're a lady. Da -da 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 -da! I apologize for your ears. Stone Badge just heightens the attack power of your Pokemon. It also enables them to use the HM move cut outside of battle. Okay. Now, this is why I suggested getting a Zigzagoon. Cut sucks, and unlearning HM moves is a pain, so I recommend that you have a Zigzagoon around to use cut. So, TM39 is what she gives us. That'll allow us to learn Rock Tomb, which inflicts a little bit of damage, and it lowers your Pokemon, opponent's Pokemon speed. So... It's a really good move. I like it quite a bit. It's just that I don't really have Pokemon that can really take advantage of that move, so I'm probably not going to use it. But hey, having a TM is better than not having one. Get out! Out of the way! What do you know? It's Team Aqua. Wait, please don't take my goods! <laughs> I just always thought that line sounded so funny. Just don't take my goods! <laughs> And goods is in all caps. It's like he's like, don't take my goods. Apparently he's getting neutered. <laughs> oh, wow. Blunt. Okay. Anyway. So. I really gotta stop saying anyway so much. So anyway, let's go ahead and take off. Alright, so. Before we take off, though, I want to show something that I actually did off screen that I withdrew out of the PC. Was that off camera, I actually caught this. Yes. This is called a tactic called HM slaving, where you teach HM moves to a Pokemon you don't intend to use. But this isn't any ordinary slave. This is the Slavenator! Ha <laughs> ha! So, unfortunately, it's very lonely because it isn't going to be used much, but yes. I taught this cut just so we can use it. Unfortunately, though, not really much of a Slavenator because I'm not really going to be HM slaving that much in this game, to be perfectly honest. Oh, it's you! You're that fascinating tra- F Fascinating? Fantastic trainer, help me out in pedal board quest. Help me, I was robbed by Team Aqua. I have to get your I have to get your goods back, okay. So be in serious trouble if we don't. Now, I said that I was gonna take the earliest opportunity to get repels, and I probably got a lot of comments saying like, oh hey Chugga, you didn't do that. Guess what? I did. Just off screen. So, now that we're done with that, let's head through here and not run into any wild Pokemon. Hey, another repel! Got a freebie a la Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. Okay. There's no surprise there, though. But I guess while we're fighting this regular guy, there is a new Pokemon on this route known as Ninkeda, which is a really unique Pokemon, to say the least. This Pokemon evolves not into one Pokemon, but into two. It evolves into Ninjask automatically at level 20. Ninjask is an extremely fast Pokemon, has the ability Speed Boost, which raises its speed at the end of every turn, and also learns moves like Swords Dance, which will sharply raise its attack. It's really good for the move Baton Pass, which will pass its stat buffs onto your other Pokemon. So, if you're looking for a really good team support Pokemon, Ninjask is your guy. Only problem is, it is really frail. 
If you have an extra slot in your six slots for Pokemon, it will also evolve into Shedinja, which is a really unique Pokemon. I like it more than most people do, but I can understand why some don't like it. It only ever has one HP. However, it will only take damage for moves that are super effective on it, and it has a really unique type of bug and ghost. So, really unique Pokemon. It can be good if used right, but you really, really have to know how to use it, or it's not going to work. I guess when we're fighting an Ikeda, uh, Shedinja's Pokedex entry, I have to say, is always something that I thought was interesting, but also really creepy, because its Pokedex entry basically says that there's a hole in its back, and if you were to look into that hole, it is said to steal your soul. I know, it's kind of weird, but... It also has like a halo over its head, meaning that I guess it's technically a zombie. It's based on cicadas and how they shed their skin and leave behind a shell that looks a lot like a cicada. And it's basically just what if that carried on as its own living thing. And I... Oh, not I. Teddy grew to level 12. I don't know what I'd do if I was that fat of a cat, but hey. <laughs> I am so nice to my cat, really. Okay, so that's about done, and I really need to go heal. Uh, can I sneak past? Yes! Okay, good. Alright, let's not faint one step- Never mind! Youngster Joey, really? Okay. No Radita, but okay. But, now that we are back from Teddy fainting, damn, bad I think we're going to end this off here, so next time on Pokemon Emerald, I am going to have off-screened all the trainers on this route because I don't want to overload you with them and I kind of still need the experience. And I guess we'll be hopefully finding that Team Aquagoon, alright? See you guys then!